Howdy, tabletop RPG fans. Thank you for supporting this channel. I'm Wrangle Me, Grand Poobah of Game Design, and this review state topic is the Castle Falkenstein RPG. In 1993, Artel Sorium playtested Castle Falkenstein at both the Origins and Gen Con with accolades and enthusiasm. It was at Origins in 1994 when they published Castle Falkenstein along with a weekend of many adventures and a grand costume ball. This was the heyday of Artel Sorium and some of the most incredible work of Mike Pondsmith, the designer and all-around jack-of-all-trades. It featured ideas and innovations that were unexplored in the RPG industry. It was published as both a perfect bound 8.5 by 11, 226 page book, but also a deluxe hardbound edition. It seems that later they also released a pocket sized edition. The setting was inspired by the grandeur and spectacle of this fantasy Victorian era of steampunk mixed with fantasy denizens and fairy magic. The branding, artwork, and pulp layout further helped convey this magical world. Cover art and all interior color art by William C. Eakin. CGI by Mark Schwimmann. All other interior artwork by Gloria Young Jenkins and Eric Hotz. All layout and graphical design by Mike Pondsmith. It won awards in 1994 and in 95. Unlike many RPGs, it is not based around dice or numeric ability scores. Instead, it used playing cards for skill resolution and magic use, along with abilities ranked by adjectives. This represented the best of an incredible setting book, along with the very specific RPG mechanics to support it. It is both magical to play and incredibly satisfying to read. At the 1994 Origins convention, I played several adventures, game mastered or hosted by Dave Ackerman, Mark Schwimmann, Derek Quinatar, with a dwarf tinker named Jack. The first section of Castle Falkenstein RPG book is primarily focused on setting and background. The second half covers what they call the great game. The game includes sections for making a character, ability resolution, dueling, magical spells, chemical formulations, arachnotech, infernal weapons, astounding engines, and more. Characters are easily created from, but not limited to, example archetypes including anarchist, brownie, consulting detective, dragon lord, explorer, fairy lord, lady, mad scientist, pixie, rogue, secret agent, wizard, and many more. Skills and basic combat use an ability system. Each ability has a matching suit for card-based resolution. Hearts for emotional and romantic activities, diamonds for mental and intellectual activities, spades for social and status-related activities, and clubs for physical activities. A character's abilities have an associated adjectives-based system for effective rank. Poor is two, average is four, good is six, great is eight, Exceptional is 10, and Extraordinary is 12. There are abilities that go beyond Extraordinary. Each character starts with six abilities, one they are great at, four they are good at, and one they are poor with. Each character can accomplish any number of feats by comparing their ability rank versus difficulty. If additional points are needed, players can use cards from their fortune hand. Each player is dealt four cards randomly from the fortune deck to play with. You use your abilities and your cards in your hand to resolve feats. Face cards are Jack 11, Queen 12, King 13, and Ace 14. A joker is wild and can be any suit and is numerically 15. Using a card suit that doesn't apply to your ability is worth only one point. Each time a card is used, it is replaced from the fortune deck. The host or game master also has a fortune hand to play all host characters. Dueling uses similar card-based resolution in a pattern of matches and rounds. Players play attacks, red cards, defenses, black cards, and rests, face cards, simultaneously each exchange. Your fencing skill dictates the number of required rests per round to continue. The spell system for sorcery also uses another visually different deck of cards. 
Spells tend to be rituals, taking at least several turns to accumulate the magic energy of four distinct types from the available area to cast a spell. Spells are crafted based on duration, complexity, range, number of subjects, and more. Cards played follow the same suit-based preference value for proper aligned suit or one point for an unaligned suit. Using unaligned suits results in harmonics and your spells can go crazy. Properly, Castle Falkenstein has no character sheets. It was better to purchase a small blank page journal and keep a diary or record of your character's adventures there. Still, in a one-shot setting like the Origins Convention, our Talsorium provided all of us players with a record sheet of sorts to keep particular information that our characters would need for gameplay. This included background information from the book about our character template, a drawing of the character, Name, birthplace, style, personality, abilities, six rank from poor to great, possessions, we keep records of found equipment and our achievements in the margins or the back of the sheet. My character, Jack, helped our team with the steamboat race by inventing the Beyond Full Steam engine that allowed us to accelerate almost twice as fast as other boats once we had built up a head of steam effectively breaking the steamic barrier. This episode is brought to you by Kaboomkin, the smaller, faster, funnier RPG of cartoon fairy tale post-apocalypse mayhem. It's time to blow stuff up. Get it now at www.kaboomkin.com. Thank you all for watching this episode. Hit like, subscribe, or ring the bell, or Booger will get you. If you want to see more videos like this, go to hopspush.com and buy an RPG or t-shirt. Do good, annoy evil, and bye-bye.